Are we living in the final days before the return of Christ? As signs of the times unfold around us, one question echoes in the hearts of believers and truth seekers alike. Will Christ return soon? Think about a world where the sun sets, painting the sky in hues of orange and pink, signaling the end of one day and the beginning of another. This daily occurrence is not just a visual feast, but a metaphor for the profound changes and signs that herald significant events. In our spiritual journey, these changes are like the signs that foretell the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, I will guide you through an exploration of eight signs that indicate the nearness of Jesus' return. This journey is essential for those seeking revelation, guidance, and a profound understanding of God's Word. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. As we stand at this pivotal moment in history, let's reflect on the words of Jesus in Matthew 24, verse 6, where he spoke of wars and rumors of wars, saying, See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. This verse serves as a beacon, guiding us in understanding the times and preparing our hearts for His return. Now, let us explore eight signs that are prophesied to be fulfilled before Christ returns. Number one, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This outpouring of the Holy Spirit is a pivotal sign of the end times. Acts 2 verse 17 speaks of the last days, saying, And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my Spirit on all flesh. This prophecy is not merely a statement of future events, but a testament to God's enduring commitment to humanity. Imagine a land scorched by the relentless sun, yearning for rain. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit is similar to the first raindrops that touched this parched earth, bringing rejuvenation and new life. In our times, we are privileged to witness this spiritual awakening. The Spirit's power is increasingly manifesting through spiritual gifts, stirring revival movements and transforming lives. This divine outpouring is not confined to a select few, but is generously given to all who seek it. The Holy Spirit is not just a source of spiritual revival. It is a source of empowerment for every believer. It equips us to serve with passion, to bear witness with boldness, and to deepen our communion with God. This empowerment is a further fulfillment of Jesus' promise in John 14, verse 26 where he assured us of the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father would send in his name. This promise was not just for the disciples of old, but extends to us today, empowering us for the work of the kingdom. Also, the Holy Spirit's role is pivotal in convicting the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. As John 16 verse 8 tells us, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So this conviction is essential for guiding people towards repentance and faith in Christ. The Spirit's work is not of condemnation, but of loving correction, guiding us towards the truth of the gospel. Also, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit fills us with hope and anticipation. It offers us a preview of the coming age, a glimpse of the kingdom of God already at work among us. This outpouring is a reminder that God is actively engaged in our world, drawing people to Himself as we experience and witness the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. 
Let us be filled with hope, joy, and a renewed commitment to be instruments of God's love and grace in a world that yearns for His touch. Number two, the restoration of Israel and the conversion of the Jewish people. Romans 11 verses 25 to 26 speaks profoundly about the eventual acceptance of Jesus as the Messiah by the Jewish people. It states, For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, and so all Israel will be saved. The restoration of Israel and the conversion of the Jewish people is a significant prophetic event, like a long-awaited reunion in a great family story. It symbolizes the fulfillment of God's promises and the completion of His redemptive plan for both Jews and Gentiles. Understand that this prophetic event, involving the restoration of Israel and the conversion of the Jewish people, has been partially fulfilled through Israel becoming a nation in 1948, which marks a significant milestone in biblical prophecy. The prophecy can be seen in Ezekiel 37, particularly in verses 21 to 22, where it is written, Thus says the Lord God, Surely I will take the children of Israel from among the nations, wherever they have gone, and will gather them from every side and bring them into their own land and I will make them one nation in the land, on the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king over them all. They shall no longer be two nations, nor shall they ever be divided into two kingdoms again. So the re-establishment of Israel as a nation in 1948 is a fulfillment of prophecy, signifying a significant event in the biblical prophetic timeline this event is a reminder of God's faithfulness and His ability to bring about His plans despite seemingly impossible circumstances. Now just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel, I would appreciate if you would like the video so that you can help me to continue spreading Christian messages. Subscribe and also click that notification bell so you won't miss any of the next videos that are uploaded every day. All right? Let's keep rolling. Just as a gardener nurtures a long, dormant tree back to life, God will revive the hearts of His chosen people. Now, the conversion of the Jewish people to faith in Jesus as the Messiah will not be just a historical or religious event, but it will also hold deep spiritual significance for the entire world. It will represent the breaking down of barriers and the unification of all believers under one Messiah. This prophetic fulfillment calls for an attitude of humility and love from the Gentiles. Rather than boasting or feeling superior, we are to embrace our Jewish brothers and sisters with open arms, recognizing that we are all part of God's family. The restoration of Israel and the conversion of the Jewish people is a beacon of hope and a powerful testament to the truth of Scripture. It serves as an encouragement to all believers to remain steadfast in faith, trusting in God's promises and His perfect timing. My friends, the developments in Israel and Jerusalem should remind us of the nearness of Christ's return. As we witness these events, let us lift our eyes in anticipation, knowing that our redemption draws nearer with each passing day. Number three, the rising of false prophets and spiritual deception. In Matthew 24, verse 11, we are warned, then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. This is a crucial sign of the times we must heed we must watch out vigilantly for the rise of false prophets, just as a ship's captain must navigate carefully to avoid treacherous waters. We too must discern the spiritual landscape to identify those who mislead and deceive. 
These false prophets often come disguised as bearers of truth. They are like wolves in sheep's clothing. As Jesus warned us in Matthew 7 verse 15, the scripture says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Therefore their teachings might seem appealing, but they lead away from the truth of God's word. The key to identifying false prophets is by knowing the true word of God. Like the Bereans in Acts 17 verses 10 to 11, who examined the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so, we too must immerse ourselves in the Bible. The prevalence of false prophets is a call for us to deepen our relationship with God. It's in the quiet moments of prayer and reflection that we can truly discern His voice from among the clamor of falsehood. My friends, let us not be fearful, but empowered by knowledge and faith. The awareness of false prophets should not lead us to despair, but to a firmer grasp of truth and righteousness. Furthermore, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3 warns us, Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. This apostasy, or falling away from the faith, is a critical sign of the end times. Apostasy is like a tide slowly receding before a great tsunami. It's a gradual yet significant departure from the foundational truths of Christianity, often replaced by more modern or convenient beliefs. This spiritual deception often comes in subtle forms. It can be the twisting of scripture to suit personal desires, traditions of men, or the dilution of biblical truths to align with societal norms. As believers, we must be anchored in the Word of God and be led by the Holy Spirit, discerning truth from deception. Apostasy is often accompanied by moral decline. As society moves away from God's laws, we witness an increase in immorality and ethical decay, fulfilling what was prophesied in 1 Timothy 4 verse 1 about some departing from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. In the face of such deception, we must cling to our faith with even greater zeal. Our commitment to Christ and His Word should be unshakable, serving as a light in an ever-darkening world. The rise of apostasy, though disheartening, should not lead us to despair, but to action. It is a call for revival, for prayer, and for a renewed commitment to sharing the truth of the gospel with boldness and love. Number 4. The Increase of Lawlessness As noted in Matthew 24 verse 12, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. This sign is a sobering reminder of the state of our world as we approach the end times. The increase in lawlessness can be seen in various forms around us. It's like a creeping vine that slowly engulfs a once vibrant garden, turning it into a place of decay and neglect. This Lawlessness is not just a rejection of societal laws, but more importantly, a turning away from God's commandments. It's a spiritual lawlessness that manifests in various moral and ethical decay. The idea of love growing cold is a direct consequence of this lawlessness. As people turn away from God's law, their capacity for genuine, selfless love diminishes. It's like a light, slowly dimming, losing its warmth and brightness. However, in these challenging times, we are called to be beacons of God's love. Like the Good Samaritan in Luke 10 verses 30 to 37, our response to the rising lawlessness should be one of compassion and unwavering love. Let us, therefore, be vigilant in our faith 
steadfast in our love and unwavering in our commitment to God's Word. In a world of growing lawlessness, our love and righteousness shine brightest. Number 5. The Increase of Wars and Conflicts As Jesus foretold in Matthew 24, verse 6, the occurrence of wars and conflicts is a sign of the times we live in. The scripture says, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. These events, while distressing, are markers on the roadmap to Christ's return. Look at the present war between Hamas and Israel happening before our very eyes. On October 7, 2023, Hamas waged one of the deadliest attacks on Jews since the Holocaust. My friends, the prevalence of wars and rumors of wars in our world is not just a political or social issue, but it is also a spiritual signpost. It reminds us that our world is in a state of turmoil and longing for the peace that only Christ can bring. Like the shifting sands in a desert, these conflicts reshape the landscape of our world and our understanding of prophecy. This proliferation of conflicts serves as a call for believers to be peacemakers, as Jesus taught in the Beatitudes. We are to be lights in a world darkened by conflict, embodying the message of reconciliation and hope found in Christ. In these times of unrest, it's vital to anchor ourselves in prayer and scripture. As the psalmist wrote in Psalm 46 verse 9, he makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. This promise reassures us of God's ultimate control over the affairs of nations. Remember, we must be vigilant. We must not be consumed by fear or despair due to these events. As believers, our hope lies not in the stability of worldly kingdoms, but in the unshakable kingdom of God. Also, these wars and conflicts remind us of the urgency to spread the gospel. As the world groans under the weight of strife and pain, the message of salvation and the hope of Christ's return becomes even more crucial. Number 6. Natural Disasters and Signs from Heaven In Luke 21 verse 11, Jesus speaks of great earthquakes, famines and pestilences in various places, along with fearful sights and great signs from heaven. These natural disasters are significant indicators of the times preceding his return. The increasing frequency and intensity of natural disasters are like alarm bells, awakening us to the reality of the times we are living in. They are reminders that the creation itself groans and suffers, awaiting redemption, as mentioned in Romans 8 verses 22 to 23. According to a new analysis of data, in 2023, at least 12,000 people, 30% more than in 2022, lost their lives due to floods, wildfires, cyclones, storms, and landslides globally. European Union scientists also said that 2023 would be the warmest year on record, as global mean temperature for the first 11 months of the year hit the highest level on record above the average. So indeed, 2023 was host to a variety of disasters, some of them the worst their respective countries have seen in years, if not decades. Though the year saw many of such catastrophes, earthquakes dominated the top 10, in some cases taking thousands of lives at once. And who knows what the coming year or years will bring. These events call for a response of compassion and solidarity. In the face of disasters, we are reminded of the importance of loving our neighbors and extending help to those in need. 
It's an opportunity to manifest the love of Christ in practical ways. Natural disasters also serve as a call to repentance and spiritual awakening. They remind us of our human frailty and the need to seek God. As Jesus said in Luke 13 verse 5, Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish, emphasizing the urgency of turning to God. In these times of uncertainty, our faith is our anchor. As believers, we are assured of God's presence and comfort even in the midst of turmoil. This faith enables us to be beacons of hope in a world shaken by calamities. Number 7. The Global Spread of the Gospel In Matthew 24, verse 14, Jesus declares, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. This global evangelism is a definitive sign of the times. The widespread declaration of the gospel is like a beacon shining across the globe, reaching every corner and culture. In an age where technology has connected us more than ever, this prophecy is being fulfilled in unprecedented ways. From remote villages to bustling cities, the message of Christ is being shared. This global evangelization effort calls for active participation from every believer. We are all commissioned, as in Mark 16, verse 15, to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is not just the task of missionaries and pastors, but of every follower of Christ. The spread of the gospel is often met with resistance and persecution, yet just as the early church grew amidst persecution, these challenges often serve to strengthen and spread the faith even more. As we partake in this global mission, it's essential to remember the power of prayer and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It's not by our might or power, but by the Spirit of the Lord, as stated in Zechariah 4 verse 6. Also, the fulfillment of this prophecy brings us closer to the return of Christ. Each person reached and each life transformed is a step closer to the completion of this great commission and the ushering in of Christ's return. And number eight, the Battle of Armageddon. Revelation 16 verse 16 introduces us to the concept of Armageddon a term that has become synonymous with the ultimate battle between good and evil. The verse says, And they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew, Armageddon. This prophetic event is depicted a pivotal confrontation in human history. The Battle of Armageddon represents the culmination of the age-long conflict between the forces of God and the forces of evil. It's like the final act in a grand play, where the tension and conflict that have been building throughout history reach their peak. This battle is not just a physical confrontation, but also signifies a spiritual showdown. It's a moment where the spiritual realities behind the physical world are fully unveiled, and the struggle between light and darkness is brought to a decisive conclusion. As prophesied in Revelation 19 verses 11 to 16, Jesus returns as the triumphant king and righteous warrior, leading the armies of heaven in a victorious battle against the forces of the Antichrist and Satan. This event also holds significant importance for Israel, the nation where much of biblical prophecy, including the final battle, converges. According to scripture, Israel is central to God's end-time plans, and the gathering at Armageddon in the region of Megiddo in Israel underscores this pivotal role. This event serves as a sobering reminder of God's sovereignty and justice. It underscores the reality that evil, in all its forms, will ultimately be defeated, and that God's righteous judgment will prevail. For believers, 
The Battle of Armageddon is a call to steadfast faith and hope. It's an assurance that no matter how chaotic or challenging the world may seem, God is in control, and his ultimate plan for redemption and restoration will be fulfilled. Let us observe the world around us, particularly considering the current conflict in Israel. It appears that events are aligning in a significant way. My friends, Armageddon inspires a sense of urgency for evangelism and prayer. Understanding the reality of this final battle should motivate us to share the gospel with urgency and to live lives that reflect the hope and truth of our faith. The events surrounding Israel and Armageddon remind us of the accuracy of biblical prophecy and the certainty of Christ's return, urging us to be vigilant and prepared. Our exploration of these eight prophetic signs of Christ's return serves as a powerful reminder of the times we live in and our role as believers. From the rise of conflicts and natural disasters to the spread of the gospel and the emergence of spiritual challenges, these signs call us to a deeper faith, vigilance, and active participation in God's work, the restoration of Israel, and the ultimate battle of Armageddon further underscore God's sovereign plan and the hope we hold in Jesus' triumphant return. Furthermore, this message on the prophetic signs of Christ's return is a compelling call to action. It invites us not only to live with purpose, hope, and anticipation, but also to secure our salvation while we can as we witness the unfolding of these prophetic events. From global upheavals to spiritual awakenings, let us embrace this time as an opportunity to draw nearer to God, deepen our faith, reaffirm our commitment to Christ, and spread His love and truth. My friends, let us turn from our evil ways and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that we will be ready for Jesus' glorious second coming. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth, you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the God who orchestrates the unfolding of time and prophecy. Your greatness is unmatched, and your wisdom is beyond comprehension. I exalt your holy name and acknowledge your sovereignty over all creation. Lord, I thank you for your enduring love and unending mercies. Thank you for the gift of salvation, the presence of your Holy Spirit, and the hope we have in Christ's return. I am grateful for your guiding hand in my life and the lives of my loved ones. Lord, I ask for your forgiveness for my sins and shortcomings. I also forgive those who trespass against me. With a heart full of forgiveness, I release every ounce of bitterness every grudge, and every painful memory. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare victory over the challenges I face. I rebuke every plan of the enemy aimed at my life, my family, and my purpose in Christ. I bind every spirit of confusion, fear, worry, and despair, and I claim peace, clarity, and courage in their place. Lord, bless me indeed. Grant me healing in my body, mind, and spirit. I pray for these same blessings upon my loved ones, that they too may experience your favor and protection. Build an hedge of safety around us. Protect us in our comings and goings. Deliver us from all evil and lead us away from temptation. 
merciful Father, as I say this prayer, together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is humbled before you right now. We come in agreement, seeking your face and your will for our lives. In unity, we claim victory over the trials of this world. We declare healing for the sick, comfort for the brokenhearted, and provision for those in need. Protect us, Lord, as we navigate the signs of the times, keeping our eyes fixed on you. Lord, we pray for your peace to reign in Israel and the surrounding regions, and may your peace surround us all wherever we are. Let your Holy Spirit guide us in all truth and righteousness. Guard us against spiritual deception and shield us from the impact of natural disasters as we trust in your sovereign protection. Fill us with your wisdom and discernment as we witness the unfolding of biblical prophecies. Help us to be vigilant and prepared for your return, living each day in anticipation of your glorious coming. Strengthen us to be beacons of hope and agents of your grace in a world that desperately needs your love. Let your kingdom come on earth and in our lives as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen. If you were blessed by this message, type the word amen in the comments section below. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you in the name of Jesus. You can help us to reach more persons and spread the gospel. You can do this by sharing the video with a friend or family member who you know needs the blessing of this prayer and by clicking the like button. Also remember to subscribe to our daily Jesus devotional channel for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We appreciate all those who support us. You're blessed to be a blessing. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer, I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. I then encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comment section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory.
May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.